There were two tribes that lived on planet Vegeta. They were your ancestors, the Saiyans, and the other tribe was known as the Tuffles. The Saiyans and the Tuffles, huh? That's correct. Now, the Tuffles were a so-called advanced civilization. They had cities much like the ones on Earth and enjoyed all of the modern conveniences such as air travel and mini malls. They had long ago outgrown energy sources which polluted their planet and were enjoying health and prosperity. Not far from the big cities, in the arid wastelands of Vegeta, the Saiyans lived in primitive fashion. They were much larger in size than the Tuffles, but much smaller in number. One thing all Saiyans had in common was that they all had tails. Another smaller in number. One thing all Saiyans had in common was that they all had tails. In size than the Tuffles, but much smaller in number. One thing all Saiyans had in common was that they all had tails. Another was their brutal and violent nature. They loved to fight. But because they were so few in number, the Tuffles never worried about the Saiyans. That is, until the day they attacked. And so the great war for planet Vegeta began. With the element of surprise in their favor, the Saiyans quickly gained a strong foothold in the war against the Tuffles. The Tuffles had technology on their side. They had devices that measured their enemy's fighting power and advanced weaponry which they used to hold the Saiyans at bay. Though few in number, the Saiyan strength was so incredible that they too won their fair share of the battles. <laughs> and just when it seemed that there was no end in sight to this horrible war, something happened on Vegeta that only happens there once every eight years. There was a full moon, a decisive factor in the war for planet Vegeta. As you must know, Saiyans have the ability to transform into huge ape-like creatures when the moon is full. Let's get out of here! It didn't take long for these monsters to destroy the Tuffles and their advanced civilization. But then a new problem began for the Saiyans. Without the technology of the Tuffles, the Saiyans couldn't travel in space. This meant they couldn't satisfy the one desire that they all shared, the desire to fight. I'm sure you've heard the joke, how many Saiyans does it take to build a rocket ship? Uh, no. <laughs> it's a really good one. <laughs> Later, Shinkai. Fine. Well, not far away, the Saiyans met the Arcosians. Now, the Arcosians had money and technology, but the planet Arcos was a dump, so they hired the Saiyans to conquer a planet for them. An unholy partnership was formed. With Saiyan might and Arcosian ingenuity combined, they formed a fleet of planet pirates. The plan that these two sinister races had meant that there was nothing they wouldn't do to achieve their goals. An armada of space pods was designed to travel the vast distances of the universe. They even sent babies like yourself to distant planets. The Saiyan leaders were more than happy to send specimens of their race into the great unknown. They knew that when the babies grew up, they would extinguish any and all inhabitants of the planet they landed on. I'd like to extinguish them. Well, all misdeeds gather their just rewards. You see, like Earth, the planet Vegeta also had a guardian. This good man used his power to attract a vast system of meteors to the planet. He could no longer tolerate the horrible burden of the Saiyan's dark deeds. So he brought destruction upon the planet, which was plagued by the weight of its inhabitants' evil. Planet Vegeta was demolished! It got kind of a major spanking, you could say, except with meteors. Only four Saiyans survived the destruction of Planet Vegeta, and you are one of them. No! I'm not- Alright, Shalawan, Shalawan, Shalawan. I want to give all praises to our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, through His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls God and Jesus, man. Please, peace and blessings to your brothers and to, and to the daughters of Sarah, a.k.a. the Shadis in the New Covenant. To you Hebrew Israelites scattered abroad who understand what's going on. To you, uh, you black and brown actual Israelites, bro. So today I'm doing a small history lesson. 
telling you, beloved ones, that the tails in Dragon Ball Z equal. Hold on. That the tails in Dragon Ball Z equal the black man's penis. And I'm going to prove this throughout history and just things you can't refute. But first and foremost, let's get Deuteronomy 7. Go to uh, verse 6, right? Because y'all know how in the intro, you know, King Kai said what? They made an unholy covenant with the other nations, bro. And then he also said in, in the beginning, they were what? Small in number, but they were of great strength. Let's get the book of Deuteronomy 7 in the Holy Bible. For thou art in holy people, meaning sacred or separate, people unto the Lord Yahweh thy God. The Lord Yahweh thy God hath chosen thee, chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth, right? When it comes to righteousness, for those who don't understand. Verse 7. The Lord did not set his love upon you nor choose you because ye were more in number than any people, for ye were the fewest of all people. Read that again. For ye, ye Hebrew Israelites, the one that went into double straits with yokes of iron upon thy neck in nakedness, right? For ye were the fewest of all people. But because the Lord Yahweh loved you, and because he, he would keep he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, hath the Lord Yahweh brought you out with a mighty hand. And redeemed you out of the house of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. See that? And just to prove who these people are, before I get into the history, Song of Solomon 1 and 5. I am black, but comely, all ye daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kedar, as the curtains of Solomon. Now, you know how in Dragon Ball Z, right? How they cut off. The saying's tales. And I'm going to prove to you how through, through black penis castration, when, they, when we were in slavery, how they used to cut off our forefathers' penises. Okay? And then, because in, even in the Bible, right, showing you allusions. Deuteronomy 23 and 1. He that is wounded in the stones or hath his privy member cut off shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord Yahweh. Right, let's let's see what a privy member is according to the Bible. The privy member, it says your penis. See that? And notice how in the law, in the Torah, the law of Moses, right, the Lord said your penis is not supposed to be cut off. Right? Now let's go into history to prove my point. It's a book called A Mind of His Own. The chapter. Let's see. Awed or appalled, it seems the first thing noticed by any so-called Edomite or European when meeting an Israelite male, which they labeled African male, were his skin color and his penis. It says would-be poet Robert Baker, who traveled to Guinea in 1562, was inspired to describe the natives this way. Remember, the black Jews fled into Africa in 70 AD. And remember, we're Shemites. Y'all check this out. This is this is what they wrote in entering in a river. We see a number of black souls whose likeliness seemed men to be, but all as black as coals. Their captain comes to me as naked as my nail, not having wit or honest to cover once his tail. What is he talking about? His penis, his phallus, his loins. In history, it says tail, T-A-I-L-E was a common 16th century slang term for penis, an English word derived from the Latin word for tail. Explorers were not only were not the only ones who stared that the penis of an Israelite is larger than that of a so-called European has. It's been shown it's been shown in every anatomical school in London. Preparations of them are preserved in most anatomical museums and I have one in mind. The English, the English surgeon Charles Wright wrote in 1799, expressing his awe of the Israelite member in capital letters. White examined several living Negroes, too, and found their and found their penile superiority to Edomites invariably to be the case. When you jump down, it says uh, 
Frederick Blumenbach, the father of comparative anatomy and the man who first classified Caucasian, quote unquote, as a racial term, showing you Edomites were not called, called, called Caucasian their whole entire existence for you people in these damn school systems. It says, had a, speci a special specimen jar of his own at the University of Göttingen in Germany. It is said that it is said that the penis and the Negro, right, is very large. This assertion, man. Professor Blumenbach wrote in 1806 is borne out by the remarkably the remarkable genitory apparatus of an Ethiopian Ethiopian in my collection. See that? Showing you, bro, in history, what was going on. Now, it says right here in history, physical anthropology. Hold on, y'all. All right. So, the phallus member or the penis of the Negro boy is longer than that of the corresponding Edomite boy. These hardly rigorous findings remind us that the subject of race and penis size has a checkered history in science, one that many intimidated, question mark, Edomite scientists, even those ostensibly committed to developing impartial statistical data, they, can, they claim to not be partial, always a myth, whatever, have chosen to avoid. These are the original records and what seems to be the first attempt to create scientific phallometric data for American males. Lieutenant William A. Schoenfeld of the U.S. Army Medical Corps published primary and secondary sexual characteristics, a study of their development in males from birth through maturity, puberty, with biometric study of penis and testes. Oh, my vitamins. <laughs> and the Journal of Diseases in Children in 1943, Dr. Schoenfeld measured the genital status of 1,500 normal boys and men from birth to 25 years of age. Amazingly, none of those 1,500 males was black. Repeat it again. Amazingly, none of those 1,500 males was black. The same glaring omission occurred in the penis size survey published in 1949 by the pioneering sex researcher Dr. Robert Littell, Littell Dickinson in the second edition of his Atlas of Human Sex Anatomy and Black Skin White Mass, black psychiatrist France Fernand cited two studies by French scientists that found no difference, right, always a myth, in size between the Israelite penis and Edomite penis, which I'm just using this for information for you immature weirdos. But the Kinsey data, marginal tabulations of the 1938 through 1963 interviews conducted by the Institute for Sex Research, the 1979 follow-up to Alfred Kinsey's famous 1948 survey of male sexual practices in the United States reported otherwise. From self-administered measurements given by roughly 10,000 whites, which they always line about their size, no ditty, and 400 blacks. 400 Israelites versus 10,000 Edomites, bro. What? Damn. It says Kinsey data authors Paul H. Gilbert and Alan B. Johnson found the erect average, the average erect Israelite penis to be longer in length and larger in circumference, right? Yeah, y'all know about it on the screen, which y'all weird asses. So right here, we have a lot of history about these Edomites, right? The Saiyans, well, us, the Saiyans, and they are trying to hide this information. Hold on. See, it's, it's the same book. And then he goes into the Israelite woman. See that? All right. So Mandingo, which is a West Israelite tribe, a so-called West African tribe, all right, I think around Nigeria. Mandingo is defined as people who live in the upper Niger River Valley in West Africa. Like I said, the black Jews, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi fled into West Africa. And remember, the wicked of our people went into slavery and butt-ass naked. Deuteronomy 28, 60, uh, 48, 68, one of them, and to languages that are spoken in this region. In terms of this paragraph, Mandingo in a 1975 film based on the novel Mandingo by Cal Onstott and upon the play based around by Jack Kirkland, Mandingo is a man of native origin, specifically known for the size of his penis. His penis is big, black, and has plenty of girth. Mandingo is a man with many sexual, sexual attributes. So I think that's a movie. 
And we know Grape Drink put the truth in his movie. See that? So I can't show it too long. Just to expose it again, the KKK document reveals penis envy to be the main reason for the clan. So y'all can look this up again. But the point was showing y'all how Dragon Ball Z is talking about the Israelites, man. See that? If the image presents a view that the Edomites are certain is true, the Israelite man's true weapon, his phallus, lurks large and always just out of sight. And remember, everybody who's dark skinned could be an Edomite, you could be a damn Hamite. Everybody dark skinned, it's not the same people. So you go back up, man. Again, Deuteronomy 23 and 1. He that is wounded in the stones, meaning your testicles, or hath his privy member cut off, shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. All right, a matter of fact, hold on. Uh, that's crazy, bro. I think it says, oh, anxiety over the phallic appeal of those buck lovers prompted an ugly national outcry when Jack Johnson, a man who traveled openly with the Edomite woman girlfriend and patted his already substantial crotch to make Edomite men envy him all the more. That's why I go right here. The missing miscegenation I already pronounced it practiced by Johnson and other buck lovers had to be discouraged many Edomites believe not merely by terror the night rise of the, Klu of the Ku Klux Klan like I just showed y'all were largely created for that purpose which shows you it goes back to penis envy but by impartial science right here black castration likewise had been practiced before the Civil War but a black slave was castrated not primarily as a defense against his ungoverned sexuality but because it was cheaper than executing him, bro. Let me see. In the 1880s and 1890s, a reign of terror began against black people in the American South. Let me see. Let me jump, bro. So they were trying to justify lynchings. Huh. That's why as a violent and perverse homoerotic exchange... Castration reveals the common Edomite obsession with the black phallus, black penis, the body of the other. Not surprisingly, the fascination with and uh, I'm gonna say worship of the black penis made it to be the most highly prized lynching sh uh, souvenir. See that? So yeah, I just thought that was interesting though. But showing you, you know, you gotta pay attention to certain details, man. Cause even right here. Like I always bring out, man, loins, virility at the seat of strength. So, like I said, I think, nah, nah, the, the, in Dragon Ball Z, bro, the Saiyans is talking about, I mean, not the Saiyans, the tale of the Saiyans is talking about the Israelite man's phallus, bro. That's crazy. But I, th I just thought I should bring that out, man. With that being said, peace and blessings and shalom.